picture this. It's 2005 and someone is trying to sell you a $300 piece of hardware for your PC. Not for better graphics, not for more frame rates. No, this little card was all about physics. Yes, physics. The way glass shatters, debris flies, or smoke swirls when you throw a grenade. Does that sound like something you'd want to spend $300 on? Apparently, it did not sound great to most people either. But for a brief, glorious moment, immortality, physics, try to make it the future. It started as an overpriced dream, became a flex for NVIDIA, and then quietly retired to teach robots how to pick up coffee cups. Let's set the scene. It's the mid 2000s. Gaming graphics are starting to look really good. Games like Doom 3 and Call of Duty 2 are setting new standards for realism. But here's the thing, no matter how pretty the graphics are, the worlds felt stiff. You shoot at a wall and maybe, just maybe, you get a bullet hole decal. Through a grenade, explosion is basically just a bright flash and a sound effect. Nothing actually moves. This is where Agia comes in. Agia was a small company founded in 2002 in Santa Clara, California. They had a crazy pitch. What if games had real physics? Like, what if you shoot at a wall and it actually crumbled? Or broke a window and the glass shattered into tiny pieces? Their answer was the Physics PPU or Physics Processing Unit. It was a dedicated card for handling physics simulations so your computer's CPU did not have to. The PPU launched in 2005 at a retail price of around $299. And to put that into perspective, that's basically the cost of an Xbox 360, which came out at the same year. And most gamers did not see the point. Agia's marketing was clear. Let your GPU handle graphics and your CPU handle gameplay, while the PPU handles physics. But the audience? Yeah, they weren't convinced. In 2008, Nvidia swoops in with a solution. They bought Agia saw the potential in physics and scrapped the whole extra card idea. Instead, they integrated physics directly into the GPUs using Nvidia's CUDA platform. CUDA stands for Compute Unified Device Architecture. What this meant was simple. If you had an Nvidia GPU, you could run physics effects without needing a separate physics card. This made physics much more accessible to gamers, at least the ones using Nvidia hardware. Now, let's talk about the games. This was physics golden age. The developers went all in on adding dramatic physics effects. Mirror's Edge with physics breaking through a glass window wasn't just sound effects. It shattered into dozens of shards that scattered dynamically. Batman Arkham Asylum, physics enabled dynamic smoke effects, fluttering papers, and some destructible environments. It made Gotham feel grimy and alive in a way no other game had at the time. Borderlands 2, explosions with physics turned into over-the-top chaos. Rocks, dirt, shrapnel, and fluids flying everywhere. Without physics, well, it kind of looked a little dull. Physics became Nvidia's ultimate flex. It was their way of saying, hey, look what we can do and AMD cannot. <laughs> but the catch is, it wasn't perfect. So why didn't physics stick around? Well, there were a few reasons. First, hardware exclusivity. Physex was built to run on NVIDIA GPUs. If you had an AMD card or you were gaming on a console, you couldn't use it. Developers started asking themselves, why should we spend all this time, money, and energy for something that only a fraction of our audience can use? Meanwhile, Havoc, another physics engine that had been around since 2000, was dominating the market. Havoc worked on everything, NVIDIA, AMD, PlayStation, Xbox, you name it. Sure, it wasn't as flashy, but it worked, and it was efficient as well. Developers did not need to spend as much time or money implementing Havoc as they did with Physics. The second problem, performance. Physics was a resource hog. Even if you had high-end NVIDIA GPUs, enabling Physics effects could tank your frame rate. For most gamers, the trade-off just wasn't worth it. Why have realistic glass shards if the rest of your game ran like a slideshow? Finally there was a shift in priorities. By the mid 2010s, developers were focusing on other things like massive open worlds, better AI, and deeper storytelling. Fancy physics effects, cool, but they weren't essential. By 2015, most developers had moved on. So here's the thing, physics didn't die though. 
it just changed careers. In 2018, NVIDIA made PhysX open source, allowing anyone to use it. And today, it's being used for stuff that's way beyond gaming. PhysX is now a core part of NVIDIA's Omniverse platform, which is used for AI training, robotics, virtual reality. As an example, it's currently helping self-driving cars simulate real-world scenarios. It's being used in industrial design to model how materials break or deform. And it's even teaching robots how to pick up objects without crushing them. So yeah, PhysX isn't making games look cool anymore, but it's quietly helping shape the real world. At the end of the day, PhysX wasn't a failure. It was just ahead of its time. It proved that physics could be more than just background details. They could be part of what makes games feel alive. And even though physics isn't a big deal in gaming anymore, you can still see its influence in modern titles like Red Dead Redemption 2 or Teardown, where physics play a core role in gameplay. It might not be front and center anymore, but it helped pave the way for games. And as it turns out, a lot of other things as well. I 